Amen. Our text this morning is Jeremiah 18, verses 1 through 6. I will be reading from the New Revised, actually the NIV version of the Bible. And it reads, This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as, seen, as it seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, can I not do with you Israel as this potter, declares the Lord. Like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hands, Israel. Thus ends the reading of the word. God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. So David, here I am again going rogue, breaking away from the lectionary text. You know, this week I attempted to work with the beheading of John the Baptist because that's the lectionary text. But that just did not work for me. And if I cannot make it work for me, how can I make it work for you? So I decided to abandon the text. I share these transparent moments with you because I believe that preaching is lived experiences. And I'm glad that I had a friend to remind me this week that that's what preaching is. It's about our experiences. And so I thank you for that on today. I was trained to be a manuscript preacher, and the manuscript is my comfort zone. I started this journey around the age of 19, and I can tell you that every sermon is different, and each uh, experience is different. I have a certain type of discipline that I come to because I want to be responsible to the text. And when my tried and true method does not work, the homiletician in me gets very frustrated. And so as I was reading this Jeremiah text, I went in knowing my thesis, however, my formula was no longer working. So what did I do with my fabulous self? I started complaining to God. My tried and true method is supposed to work. It's been working for years. How are you gonna change up the game at this point? How are you going to leave a sister hanging like this? <laughs> and you know, just as you were doing, I felt as if God was laughing at me. And as I sat still with that for a moment, I heard the voice within say, precisely. Isn't that what this text is about? It's about being flexible. And my response was kind of a combination of Scooby-Doo, deer in headlights, Arnold Drummond kind of response. Hmm? What you talking about, God? You know, God uh, changes it up on us every now and then, and change is so uncomfortable. As I was looking at the text in its totality, the whole chapter, it did not appear that this text was even any more favorable than the one that I was trying to work with, with the beheading of John the Baptist. But what this text reminds me of is that God is sovereign. God has a creative purpose in mind, and God is flexible because God is working with humanity, and he realizes who it is that we are. And so often, Pastor Barton tells us that God is not codependent, God is not going to do it for us. We have to remain flexible and be willing to do the work to change. Because friends, what I've discovered is when things stop working, that's a signal to us, yeah, it's time to abandon the ship and take a different direction. Over the years, I've realized different congregations struggling because, and I, I realized that they're struggling because people refuse to change. There are uh, childhood uh, congregations that I can think of right now. 
And 25 years ago, they are no further along than they were back then. And the reason is because they refuse to change. I can hear their vocabulary even now. Well, we've always done it that way before. Why do we need to change now? It's been working. If it's not broke, why fix it? Well, my friends, it's broken because you're not growing. There needs to be upward mobility. And so this text comes to remind us that if we are to be relevant to future generations as the global church, we must remain flexible. Our status quo will no longer be convenient or it will not lo any longer be enough to grow us. Great basketball players and great football teams realize how to adjust their offense to overcome their defensive pressures. And if we believe that God is still a still speaking God, then our mistakes and our do-overs are not the end of our story. Our story is still being written. Our messiness, our quirkiness, our uniqueness is what makes us a beautiful piece of art. Earlier this week, I was watching a YouTube clip of a potter. She happens to be female. And so I want to demonstrate this for us. Um, use your imagination, this is a potter's wheel. <laughs> so I saw her working the clay. She smacked it in the center and began to work with it and work with it and work with it. And what I noticed is the closer that the clay got to the center, the more pressure she applied. And the more the, the clay took form of a bowl, the more pressure was applied. And the other thing that I noticed is as she dipped her hands in the water, the messiness didn't seem to bother her. Unlike Latrell, I do not like to get my hands dirty. <laughs> but as she worked the clay into this beautiful pot, um, the more detail and the more work it took. And she pulled it from its center. And so, yes, I flunked uh, kindergarten when it came to <laughs> so, my pot. The point is, what is this text saying to us? That the closer that we get to our divine purpose, the more pressure it seems that we are facing. But the beautiful thing about God is God's hand always remains on the clay. God knows our potential. God knows what we have the ability to be. And our messiness does not bother God. God only sees the beautiful creation he intended for us to be. So my friends, I want to leave you with this wisdom story. There was a father who often had to work in his home office after hours. And so he would bring his work home with him. But his daughter, who was nine, was used to her father playing with her after he's done with his work. On this particular night, he knew that he was not going to be able to play with her. So he devises a plan. He says, if you give me an hour and let dad do some work, I will play with you. So that seemed to settle his daughter for a moment. But every five minutes, she kept disrupting him. And so the father finally said after the third time, why don't you come and play in my office? You can play in here as long as you promise not to disturb me. Five minutes into being on the coffee table at her, in her father's office, he gives her a project, she colors it, and in five minutes, she's done. Dad, I'm done, here it is. He compliments her on the beautiful work that she has done. He creates a larger drawing project for her to do. 10 minutes later, she's done. She's disrupting him. 
So the dad saw, sitting on the coffee table, a magazine, and on the back of the magazine was an image of the world. He decided to take the image and cut it up into small pieces to make a puzzle. He said, I know it will take her at least an hour to finish this. Within 30 minutes, she was done. She's like, Dad, I'm done, come see. He was like, impossible. She was like, no, come see. He went over and sure enough, it was complete. Every puzzle piece perfectly in place. He looked dumbfounded and he said, honey, how were you able to do this? She said, dad, on the back of the world was a picture of a little girl. And as I put her face together, my world came together. My friends, when God looks at the world, he does not see borders and oceans and land. What God sees when God sees the world is our beautiful faces. Broken humanity, yes, we may be, but to God, we are a precious and creative ongoing work. So if God does not give up on us, we should not give up on ourselves. Let us pray. I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. As I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee, draw me nearer, 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 precious Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Consecrate me now for thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Amen. You are beautiful as you are. You are enough. You are God's handiwork. God's hand is always upon you. Go in peace and love and embrace your beautiful selves as you are. Go in peace.